Lafayette Building was built in Detroit, Michigan in 1923 to occupy a popular triangle lot. However, influenced by various socioeconomic factors, it started to lose the function and uses and found to be abandoned for more than a decade, which eventually led to the complete demolition in 2009. Underneath the element of the present, it is easily mistaken, and we tend to undermine the past and future of the place's intention with its present needs. This tension is especially pronounced in structures designed quickly to meet an urgent population need. If we continue the present convention of continuously replacing buildings without com commensurate economic growth, we will become financially and ecologically bankrupt if no remediation steps are taken. Understanding the large-scale energy system of cities over a long period of time allows us to re-evaluate the problems of our current short-sighted urban design and management systems. It is necessary to establish a more comprehensive paradigm based on the most accurate possible understanding of our energy system that is played by the rules of thermodynamics. Humans have been improving their civilization through continuous innovation. However, recent usage of fossil fuel has made some thermodynamic rules to be ignored from how we use those techniques and energy. Like all other systems, our socio-economic urban system pulse. This energy system which is composed of production and consumption display dynamic transient behavior, which in turn form a repetitive process cycle. Unlike other pulses, recent industrialization came with immense metabolic shift. During the recent explosion of economic growth, the cities, especially in East Asia, are being filled with concrete high-rise buildings. People pay a lot of attention to the few representative office towers. However, they forget the fact that the majority of building stocks are consisted of lower-end concrete residential towers. Its development occurred recently with significantly great speed and quantity, also involving continuous destruction without paying attention to their environmental cost. This particular typology of multi-unit housing first started as form of social housing in Europe and United States. However, this form of housing was not as effective as had been predicted, and its failure resulted from various converging economic, social, cultural, and political factors. Critics have made mistake of oversimplifying the problem as the failure of Corbusier-like mass housing system. Planners influenced by Jacobs and Newman, has criticized the superblock high-rise residencies as being pathological form of living, breeding crime and deterioration. However, this oversimplified censure is not useful framework for evaluating housing typology in general because many similar housing has succeeded in various locations. When we look at the urban population concentration rate over the last 50 years, when urban concentration reaches certain amount with certain rate of growth, this economic building typology finds itself in dominant construction trend of the society. Since the time of industrialization differ from one another, the time this typology became needed are different accordingly. The typology developed first by Western countries were later adopted by later urbanized Asian cities in the form of individual tradings. In many Asian countries, the prospect of owning such an apartment housing unit is equivalent to the general social perception formed around the image of suburban single-family houses in the U.S. Apartment units were treated as means to augment wealth. Buildings and complexes were designed like machine with reflection of variables for a certain time and place. However, when this external environment such as housing market and construction cost drastically changes, these models that were designed and distributed under closed design variable without adaptability started to fail.
When we observe a simplified Poisson cycle of autumn, we can notice that when consumption graph starts to outweigh production and push far larger influenced by its own momentum, the entire system's balance is lost and its phase steep decrease. In order to apply this simple logic into the individual urban systems, part of production was represented with GDP growth rate. Representation of consumption was given through the amount of housing structure measured by growth fixed capital on housing. If we limit the period starting from 1960 to 2010, the Netherlands was stable in its urban concentration amount. However, in recent years, the production started to decline and maintenance of those building stocks started to cause urban issues. Japan also had finished this urban concentration in its late 50s. However, the production has stopped its growth in the early 1990s, which is starting to cause large-scale building obsolescence that are no longer supported with the overall economic growth. South Korea experienced a steep urbanization ending in the 1990s. However, its recent stabilized growth rate finds itself more challenging to keep its housing stocks built for the growth stage because of the absolute dominance of these concrete block residential compared to the low-rise brick buildings. Since the first stereotype concrete housing complex was built in 1972, the popularity made it a nation's representative housing typology in less than 40 years. Looking at Seoul as a case study for this type of historical analysis, is highly relevant to this study because it is currently transitioning from growth to stabilized state. Like many other traditional East Asian cities, traditional Seoul urban system was constructed with single-story brick housing structures without proper urban planning. However, when industrialization started, this initial development showed many forms of weakness. Redeveloping this hectic sediment and meeting the high demand for housing became the prominent political agendas. Numerous housing structures were developed and sold by private housing development companies and formed an extremely popular urban housing market. This introduction of reinforced concrete technology gave the city government and developers the ability to develop housing quickly and cheaply. In addition, Individual home buyers benefited not only in terms of greater financial margin but also in terms of improved social perception for owning these type of apartment. In the middle of expanding socioeconomic system, owning this type of apartment unit was an excellent way to invest money as well. The following real estate price for Chamsil apartment showed that over 10 years, the unit price went up more than 100% and continued its growth more than three decades. The continued rise of housing price provoked many housing owners to organize redevelopment committees and to push for block scale redevelopment involving large scale demolition of lower density housings, most of which were only under 20 years old. It was to be replaced with higher than 15 to 30 story buildings. However, when economic growth is stabilized, these buildings that were designed for the quick turnover, which is perfect for rapid growth period, is projected to experience a very large scale obsolescence in its near future. The previous redevelopment boom, with the involved costs being covered by increased unit sales, is now highly risky venture since housing availability has surpassed the demand. Such buildings constructed in 1990s are now starting to grow old in terms of Korea's modern redevelopment history. China, although it is still maintaining its high growth rate, the rate that fixed capital formation on housing is accumulating is unusually steep and its momentum of growth seems excessively strong. Based on law of energy system, the growth rate is destined to come down 
and the accumulated building mass where apartment units take most of the new urban development will lose its urban scale maintenance resource for these types of structure, which is continuous growth. For society that is going through a growth period, building structures are designed for quick turnovers. In this situation, there is continuous need for destruction in order to increase the flow of energy into the urban energy system. The long-term temporal boundary of building's lifespan is not a critical parameter for any of the people. In case of Empire State Building, a core research topic for Kaya Mo, on urban metabolism's gradual self-organization toward the maximum power system is illustrated. In the book Delirious New York, Koha states that the continuous social energy system's growth was basic condition for this metabolism. Then what will happen when society stops its growth? Because of its economic and convenient nature, reinforced concrete construction method was the dominant method of housing construction for these typology after the World War II, especially these massive style residential complex structure started to be distributed all around the world, combined with the post-war economic boom. Reinforced concrete contains critical shortcoming in its structural sustainability over an extended time frame, namely that its embedded rebar corrodes over time. Built with construction logic that does not utilize fully its potential of material of concrete itself, the reinforced concrete building loses viability in a shorter time frame as compared to other existing construction methods. The choice of steel, although it can be galvanized, limits the overall life of the structure with the eventual corrosion process. During the growth period, when the abundant production provides goals and resources to complement its temporality, Various conventions and matching building typology have been used as a means to maximizing its energy flux. However, when the increasing momentum of consumption surpasses the decreasing pro production, the prolonged momentum maintained by these norms in our current urban energy systems are now working as destructive force. We need to find ways to feed the consumption back into production through changes in our convention so we can comparatively stabilize our city's future person cycle. These building blocks are composed of individual units, and simple stacking of these units completes these apartment building blocks. Each of units are composed of the load-bearing walls. Necessary structural retrofit process can accompany an effort for higher building performance through an integrated retrofit measure. Currently, every Korean apartment unit has thermally active floor system. If we add more surface areas that are thermally active, there are much less need to provide high-end air temperature, which is an inefficient way to achieve comfortable operative temperature. An integrated building design research model is necessary for structural retrofit for existing concrete structures. Combined with integrated implementation of radiant thermal control system, these walls form an important boundary that encapsulate the everyday lives of Korean families. Initially developed floor heating system was de designed for the traditional Korean lifestyle of sitting down culture. As the lifestyle changes and variates, Extending the heated surface to vertical surfaces makes sense for improving living environment. The conventional detail design utilizes the inside insulation for its construction's convenience. Structural wall constructed with reinforced concrete is added by the layers of material playing different roles with each limited life expectancies. Since the reinforced concrete part is exposed to harsh temperature variation of the outside, first, the opportunity of the mass to be used as a thermal mass is lost, and second, its allowance to heavy moisture 
and change of temperature spurs the deterioration of concrete structure. Through the Wufi analysis, we can see the harsh impact of structure part have to bear. The temperature differentiation is large. Large amount of water infiltration also happened with impact the embedded rebar's fast corrosion. In the process of replacing deteriorated layers of surfaces, applying an outside insulation with additional radiant surface on a vertical wall will extend the use of the concrete function from being mere skeleton to an integrated thermal mass in relation with the radiant heating system. It will also protect the condition of the reinforced concrete structure by protecting it from diurnal temperature shift as well as moisture infiltration, which in turn elongate the life of the structure. In order to delay the carbonation process, application of additional coating is recommended and application of the thermal capillary mat embedded in the process will minimize the cost. However, current convention doesn't differentiate such design factors. The proactive investment for the retrofit will extend the lives of existing buildings, which comprises the significant portion of our city's stored energy. It is less meaningful to make decisions based on the conventional comparison between operational energy versus embodied energy. When co current convention for life cycle embodied energy calculation is bound only to the temporal boundary of rapid growth period. We need a more inclusive methodology for extending the life of our city to approach this upcoming large-scale obsolescence, especially with expanded temporal boundary.